In this Project Lead Away presentation, we'll look at accuracy and precision of measurement. Now, some of this will overlap with some previous presentations, and some material will be quite new. An important part of measurement is the numerical value of that measurement. However, the value is meaningless without units. Now, measurement must always include units, and be sure to always include your units when you record your measurements. And as we talked about during unit conversions, it's great to show them too during your calculations and show the cancellations as well. A measurement is never certain. There's always errors in the measurement, even when they're very small. It's important to know that the level of error may be uh, that may be inherent with the measurement. A measurement is only useful if a value is associated with the units and the uncertainty of the value is understood. Potential error in measurement creates uncertainty. There are two types of errors that can occur in measurement. Random errors are typically associated with measuring equipment or the person performing the measurement. For example, when measuring the volume of a liquid in a graduated cylinder, the measurement value may fall between two graduations on the cylinder. The reader must estimate the value, which may sometimes be too large or too small. Random errors can be identified by repeating the same measurement. Systematic errors are more difficult to identify. Let's think of two examples of systematic errors. In the first one, a person timing heats of a track and field race stands 100 meters away from the starting gun. Since it takes some time for the sound to travel to the person timing the race at the finish line, the timer consistently depresses a button to start the stopwatch a fraction of a second later for every race. A scale is not zeroed before taking measurements and is later found to read 0.2 grams with no mass on the scale. Therefore, all the measurements consistently show a mass of 0.2 grams greater than the mass of the object measured. Systematic errors can be eliminated if they're identified, but often systematic error goes unidentified. We know that errors always exist in measurement. Therefore, there is always some uncertainty associated with the measurement. We may never know the true value of a measured quantity. However, we can quantify that uncertainty. If we know how close to, or how far from, the true measurement value we may be, the measurement is useful. One way to indicate uncertainty is through the use of significant digits. We use this method in previous activities. Using significant digits, the measurement value is written such that all the certain digits are recorded first and that the last significant digit represents a somewhat uncertain digit. In this case, if the measurement was recorded with a metric scale, the person recording this measurement is certain that the value is between 3.8 and 3.9 centimeters and estimates that by reading that the reading is just under halfway between a 3.8 and the 3.9 on the scale. We often use a plus minus designation to indicate uncertainty of a value. In this case, if we are certain that our measurement falls within 5 hundredths of a centimeter of our reading, then we are certain the true value falls between 3.79 centimeters and 3.89 centimeters. Sometimes using significant digits to indicate uncertainty can be misleading in terms of the closeness of the reading to the actual measurement's value. The resolution of the instrument, which is indicated by the smallest increment on the instrument, may, be, may lead the user to believe that the measurement reading is a better estimate of the actual measurement than the instrument can actually produce. For example, speedometers are often incremented to one mile per hour. That is, its resolution of the scale is one mile per hour. However, speedometers typically do not display the speed within one mile per hour of the actual speed. Sometimes manufacturer specifications will give a maximum error that would indicate uncertainty. However, it is sometimes difficult to determine the meaning of specifications when terms such as accuracy, precision, error, and uncertainty are often used interchangeably. When a measurement is critical, 
the precision and accuracy of the equipment should be checked often to ensure that errors are within acceptable limits. How can we determine, with confidence, how close a measurement is to the true value? In our previous activities, we have discussed uncertainty in a single measurement. The question has been, how close to the actual value is this particular measurement? We have answered this question by identifying a range within which we feel confident that the true value lies based on the scale markings of the measuring instrument. But we can use repeated measurements of the same quantity to get a better estimate of the true value. With repeated measurements, we can begin to better quantify the uncertainty of a measurement taken with a specific instrument. Of course, we cannot eliminate random error. So when repeated measurements are taken, some measurements will be larger and some measurements will be smaller than the true value. Our best estimate is a mean of the measurements. There are two distinct terms that are related to the uncertainty in a measurement, accuracy and precision. Although precision and accuracy are often confused, there's a difference between the meanings of the two terms in the fields of science and engineering. Accuracy indicates how close measurements are to the actual quantity being measured. For example, if you put a 50 pound weight on a bathroom scale, we would consider the scale to be accurate if it reported a weight of 50 pounds. Precision indicates how close together repeated measurements of the same quantity are to each other. A precise bathroom scale would give the same weight each time you stepped on the scale within a short time, even if it didn't report your true weight. So, if you placed a 50 pound weight on the bathroom scale five times, and the scale displayed a weight of 47 pounds each time, the scale would be considered to be precise, but it would not be accurate. A target analogy it's sometimes used to differentiate between the two terms. Consider the arrows or dots on the target to be repeated measurements of a quantity. The first target shows that the arrows, or repeated measurements, are centered around the center of the target, the actual value. So on the whole, the measurements are fairly close to the target, the actual measurement, making the measuring device accurate. But the repeated measurements are not close to each other, so the precision of the measuring device is low. The second target shows that the arrows, or repeated measurements, are close together, so the precision is high. But the center of the measurements is not close to the target, or the actual value, of the quantity. What should a target look like if the measurement is both highly accurate and highly precise? Ideally, any measurement device that we pick up and use would both be accurate and precise. Accuracy is dependent on calibration to some sort of standard. And when we have poor accuracy, it's often because of some procedural or equipment flaw. Poor accuracy is often associated with systematic errors. So if you think back to our example, the person who's standing too far away from the starting gun while timing track and field events will not be accurate. They'll consistently time these track and field events as being too long. Precision, on the other hand, is dependent on the capabilities of our measuring device. The more capable it is, the more we can reproduce our measurements, and that is, results in greater precision. Poor precision is often associated with random error. So think back to that graduated cylinder. If the graduations on the cylinder are too far apart, it would be very difficult for a person to be precise on repeated measurements. If the graduations are much more tightly packed together, then it would be easier for that person to reproduce the same measurement over and over and therefore be more precise. 